He was a bachelor who spent Christmas Day with children in hospitals. He got local businesses to pay for a party for the poor, giving out thousands of free meals. And he courted the votes of St. Louis's growing African-American community, which had been loyal to the Republican Party since the days of Abraham Lincoln. But it was Dickman who finally made good on a promise made back in the early 20s, a new hospital for Negroes and he used the New Deal to do it. When Homer G. Phillips Hospital opened in 1937, it was the end of a long battle, and one that was about a lot more than health care. Back in 1923, the big bond issue had included money for a Negro medical facility. But activists wanted more than that, not integration. That fight was many years away. The law was separate but equal. And compared to many other segregated cities, that law meant something in St. Louis. Oh, not only does it accept the, the spirit of, of separate but equal, but it's willing to fund separate but equal. It really is working toward that goal. There is an understanding that the status quo is firmly entrenched in this notion here that we're going to have segregated institutions and that the city is willing to pay for it. Although most African Americans live near downtown, activists wanted the new hospital to be built in the Ville, the city's premier black neighborhood and the center for its educational institutions. The Northside location would make it truly separate and it would give blacks themselves the opportunity to make it equal, filling it not just with their community's patients, but with their own doctors, nurses, medical students, and administrators. It would be one of the few institutions in the city where a black woman could get a job as a telephone operator. And yet, 10 years after the bond issue, there were promises and no hospital. It was Mayor Dickman who finally found the city money to get the project going and then got the federal WPA money to finish it. By then, many St. Louis blacks, longtime Republicans, had made the switch to the party of Roosevelt and Dickman. Here's an example where we can see how local issues, what is going on at the local level, affects this overall trend. So it's not that African Americans are looking to FDR, but they're looking to what their local politicians are willing to do for them.